Yeah, g'day guys, welcome to another episode of Shanky Garage. My name is Sam. In today's episode, we're gonna be stripping back the one ton chassis and coating it with the three-step KBS product. So we'll jump straight into the video and hope you enjoy. Cheers, guys. So today we're going to strip this chassis back and get it into a bare chassis to paint with the KBS. So we're going to pull the diff out, pull the leaf springs out on the front here. We're gonna pull this engine out, pull the steering and suspension components out on the front. So yeah, basically get it into a bare chassis. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna move this cabin out the way and I'll spin this chassis uh, around and basically pull the engine out with this come along, just with the shed here. So I know I mentioned that I was going to fit the four link suspension in before I painted the chassis and Ideally, that would be the best way to do it, but I've had a bit of a change of plans with the diff. So, um, I've been getting quotes with the 10 bolt to rebuild that with, you know, 31 spline axles, true track center, upgraded disc brakes. And yeah, they're coming back around the five grand mark for, yeah, full rebuild of the diff. So, um, yeah, five grand for a 10 bolt, it just doesn't really seem feasible. I didn't really want to spend five grand on, on the 10 bolt. So I've just decided why stuff around, I might as well order a complete nine inch um, diff from the Castle Main Rod Shop. And then that comes, you know, with 31 spine axles, true tracks and a um, wheelwood disc brakes as well. So yeah, better brakes than just your standard Commodore disc brakes. Um, all for, yeah, four and a half grand. And, you know, I think they're meant to ha handle around, you know, 800 horsepower. So, yeah, why stuff around? I might as well just order that. But unfortunately, it's about a eight to 10 week lead time. So, yeah, 10 weeks is a long time um, to wait to put the four link in. So, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna paint the chassis and then when I put the four link in, I'm just gonna have to repaint in some areas. So I'm gonna have to, yeah, cut a, uh, put a couple of cross members in. Um, so yeah, if, if I need to just repaint them little areas, then um, yeah, so be it. So it's not ideal, but yeah, it's definitely better than waiting, you know, eight to 10 weeks before I start um, painting the chassis. Okay, so I've just got the cab flipped back over. I thought I'd show you guys this rig that I made up, just fabbed up pretty quickly actually, and it actually works really good. I don't think I shared it in the other videos, so I thought I'd show you guys. Uh, so basically it bolts to the rear cab mount here, and then it pivots here, and then it's got, got your, your legs here. So as you tilt the front, it'll pivot, and then as you keep tilting, it'll finally rest on, on these legs here. And then you can, put some blocks up here to support support the whole cab on the ground once it's flipped over. And then yeah, that way, them legs and the blocks take the, the whole weight of the cab and take any pressure off the, the bodywork and the windows. So I was actually able to tilt that over by myself. Okay, so I've just got the car in position underneath the shed with the come along here. So it's got the slings, um, so I've slung up from the front water pump here and then also just on the rear transmission. So I've undone the transmission bolt. So there's yeah, two, two bolts here and then I've undone the engine mounts. So she's ready to come out. So the engine is out. I've also just taken out the transmission cross member. So yeah, I'll jack, start jacking this thing up off the ground and then I can start stripping the front end.
Okay, so I've just got everything stripped here. Just taken the calipers and the discs off. Taken all the steering linkages off. So I've just kept all that sort of as a complete and just pulled it all off um, all together. Taken the shockies out. So I've pretty much also just cracked the nuts on the spindle here. So I'll get that to focus, but yeah. So I've just cracked these nuts here. So that nut there and that nut there. Obviously don't take them all the way out because there's um, you know pressure in this spring. So if you take them all out and then pop them, yeah, you're gonna get yourself into trouble there. So you just um, basically loosen them off and then you can tap the con lower control arm um, to sort of pop the ball studs. Um, also had to hit sort of on the side of the spindle here just to sort of break, break that ball stud. Um, so yeah, they're both popped and ball studs and also on the other side. So I'm at the point now of needing to compress the spring to basically pull the, the spindle out and then drop the lower control arm. So I'm not gonna show you how to do that because I'm sort of gonna do a bit of a, uh, I guess a shonky. I've got some all thread and I'm gonna make up a bit of a compressor, um, which I don't really suggest the average person do. Um, you know, I'm, be, I'm a diesel mechanic, so I sort of have a pretty good idea of what I'm doing. So, um, but yeah, if you are doing this job at home, then I would suggest to get the proper spring compressors for the job. Um, by the way, Barnsey on Barnsey Builds has a good strip down um, of his front end and also using the, the proper compressors. So yeah, I'd suggest watch that video and I'll put a link in the description. So I've just got the springs out now on both sides, both springs removed, taken out the spindles as well. So now I can remove the upper and lower control arms. And then yeah, that's pretty much the, the front end strip now. Okay, so that's all the front end stripped down. Probably took about five hours, I reckon, to strip all that down. So pull the engine out and then, yeah, strip it all. So now I just got the rear end to do. So pull the diff out and the springs and then should be a bare chassis. Okay, so I've just taken the weight of the chassis, just jacked it up with a bottle jack there. So that's just taken the load off the springs. So yeah, they're not loaded. So when I unbolt them, um, yeah, there's no weight on them. Um, I've also just, yeah, taken the shock absorbers out. I've just left them on the bottom for now. So what I'm going to try and do is um, roll the whole diff and springs out as one. Also, um, another thing that I have done is I've just taken a measurement of the inside of the diff here and to do this cross member. So. That's the cross member where the cab mounts to. So just taking the measurement on both sides of, of that, just so I know that when I get the new diff, it's gonna go in exactly the same spot as I've got that reference uh, measurement. And also just taking a few other measurements, so like, you know, tire to chassis measurements and stuff. So yeah, just wanna make sure that the diff goes back in the same spot. So the diff and springs have been removed. So that's everything stripped from the chassis now. So this cross member here, it's not gonna be needed uh, because of this full link. So with the full link, there's a new cross member that gets welded in roughly about there where the coil overs mount to. So basically I can cut this cross member out and then yeah, there's a new one that'll weld in there. So, so I'll cut that out and then it's pretty much ready to wire wheel the chassis back to bare metal. So I was gonna get a mobile sandblaster around to sandblast this chassis, but they can't do it because I'm too close to the city and it makes too much noise and it's too dusty. So yeah, they generally don't like to come around to, you know, sort of built up areas. So 
anyway, um, it's all good. I'll save a bit of money there and, and you know, why wheel it back myself anyway, so. Okay, so I've got the chassis fully stripped back to bare metal pretty much. So yeah, what an absolute shit job that was. You just see all the dust and crap everywhere. Half of it was also probably on me as well. But anyway, at least that job's done. Um, I did use a wire wheel for majority of it. And then when I was at Bunnings, I seen these things, these flexi strip discs. And this one's yeah, pretty worn, but yeah, I recommend get a couple of these to do it because, yeah, these make it so much quicker. Um, they are expensive though, so one of these was like 25 bucks, I think, and it only lasted probably 30 minutes, 40 minutes at tops, but the money spent is like a lot of time saved in stripping it back. So, yeah, definitely recommend getting these things if you're not going to sandblast it, but yeah, ultimately, if I was to do it again, I'd probably get it sandblasted because yeah, it was just a shit job and it's probably not the best job either. Like there's little areas that you just can't get into and stuff. So yeah, sandblaster would be a way better job. But anyway, it'll be, it'll be fine, I'm sure. Okay, so I've just brought the chassis outside. I've just sprayed it with degreaser and just sprayed all degreaser down in the chassis rails. So I'll give that a good wash out with the hose um, all down the chassis rails. Um, and then basically I can weld in this piece as well so I've just got that bit removed just for all the water and stuff to come out and I'll yeah, weld that piece in and then basically I can start with the three step uh, KBS chassis coater. Okay so it's a nice sunny day in Brisbane, perfect day to spray the chassis. So I've got up early this morning and I've just used this AquaClean, sprayed the chassis with the aqua clean and scrubbed it with a scotch bright and then hosed off uh, let that to dry and then i used the rust blast so sprayed that on and let it sit for a good half an hour and then washed it off with the hose once again and then also dried it off with the blow gun so yeah she's pretty much ready to paint now so when you use a rust blast it does sort of leave a bit of like a residue on there so what i'll do is i'll go over it with uh, wax and grease remover and then i can um yeah basically lay on the paint So the first coat is applied, come out not too bad. Got a few little runs sort of underneath, a few little drips, but um, was able to just go over them with the paintbrush and brush them out because it's like a self-leveling paint. It doesn't really matter too much. So. so yeah, come out not too bad. So I'll let it dry for a couple of hours and then I'll go over it again with a second coat. Okay, so the second coat has been applied. Just let it dry for a couple of hours. And I just need to put the final top coat on, which will be this um, tin of black top. So this has got a UV stabilizer in it to stop it from fading. So I'll mix this up, a bit of thinners, and uh, spray the final coat. And then the chassis is done. So I've just let this dry overnight and this morning I've just put it on some jacks. So this will be the final resting place and I can start building it up from here on. So yeah, that'll be probably the best part I reckon is starting to build it up with all brand new shiny parts. 
So pretty happy with how the coatings come out. Seems to be pretty hard durable coating, so it should last for another, you know, 50 years. Okay, so that's it for today's video, guys. Hope you enjoyed that and got something out of it. So if you did, hit that like and subscribe button below. I'd appreciate the support. So in the next video, we're gonna be fitting the front end back together. So we got the wheelwood brakes and the tubular control arm kit from the Castle Main Rod Shop. So yeah, pretty excited to fit that together. So yeah, we'll leave with that guys and we'll see you next time. So cheers.